We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. On today's segment of Know Your Rights, we're talking about whether a passenger has to provide ID to law enforcement during a traffic stop. Most of these stops are routine, meaning that they are due to the police witnessing a driver's behavior or a vehicle that is not in compliance with traffic laws. The focus of these stops should be on the driver who is responsible for operating the vehicle and is typically required to show law enforcement their license, registration, and proof of insurance upon request. In most jurisdictions, passengers are not obligated to hand over their identification during a routine stop. This is based on the idea that the passenger is not the one being pulled over. However, there are exceptions. For instance, if an officer has reason to believe that the passenger is involved in criminal activity, he or she may have the legal right to ask the passenger for their ID. This could be based on something the officer sees or information that is related to the stop. Some states also have laws that require an individual to identify themselves to law enforcement when asked. This can apply to passengers as well. So while you're usually in the clear, passengers can always ask if they're not sure. Say something like, do I need to give you my ID to have police clarify the situation? That wraps up our discussion for today. Stay informed, know your rights. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. What up, what up, you already know it's your boy Pistol Pete. We outside, you know what I'm saying, right here in front of Sweet Chicks. Today we got TK in the building. Uh, TK has been on the fans twice. Uh, now he's doing a lot of great things, but let's get right to it, man. You already know, your boy Pistol, dog of the yard. What up, what up, you already know what it is, your boy Pistol Pete. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard. Today we got TK in the building straight out of Bronx. What's up? What's up? Borough, you already know the hometown. Glad to be here, man. What's Respect up, the dog in the yard, good, man. man. Pistol, man. Thanks again, man, for man, the old, man. opportunity to speak, man. Appreciate having you, man. Talk to What's me. What's up, What's man? How you on? been, man? I'm healthy, man. I'm getting through. You know, I'm happy. You know, I'm in a real good space because, you know, in my life, you know, I pray for purpose. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And and right now, I have a a lot on my hands in terms of purposes mm. that I'm dealing with. And um, it's a wonderful journey that I'm on. Cool, you know, great. I just come home probably, not just come home, but it seems like I'm just coming home. It's been eight years. Okay. You know, come March and um pause. But then March is eight years. And uh, I've been working and grinding and finding my way. And um, I'm happy. Beautiful. That's beautiful, man. For those that don't know a little bit, anything about you, I mean, a lot of people don't know. We would like to give them, inform them about, a little bit about your back, their background, your history, you know, your siblings, where you was born, raised. Got when you, you started getting yourself in trouble, why, you you know what I mean? Like, you had your moms, your dad involved in your life, you know, and so forth. Okay, um, I was born in Brooklyn, Brookdale Hospital. You know, I was raised in Albany Projects. Then I moved to the Bronx as a child, you know, and um, that's where I got my bones, you know, up in Eden World Projects in the Bronx. And um, I grew up with just my mom and uh, my siblings. I had an older brother. Rest in peace, he was killed. And a uh, younger brother and sister, you know, they're still alive. And um, 
you know, I never met my dad until I actually never actually met him physically. You know, I met him over the phone not too long ago, you know, and, um, you know, I made it this far without him, you know what I'm saying? And um, I salute him only in the fact that he made me the man I am, to be strong, independent, you know, aware, awake, okay. and in tune, you know? Yeah, of course. And I do struggle, but, you know, I had to claim that. Yeah. You know, and I do. So it must have been tough, you know, um, um, being um, raised with just your brother and your, and your baby sister, you know, and no, no, no. No father figure, nobody to really tell you, you know what I mean? Like, hey, slow it down and shit like that. Or. Facts, facts. You know, um, we as men definitely owe it to our family to be there. You know what I'm saying? And me growing up without a dad and realizing that at a young age and realizing that, you know, um, you know, the lack of a father leaves a young man and even a, 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 a young lady, you know, but I only speak from my perspective, um, it leaves them with an empty space, and you have to figure that out. And a mother can always teach a young man how to be a man. Mm -hmm. There's some things he has to learn from a mentor, you know, another male figure. And um, lacking that in our community is causing us to make a lot of decisions that we make. You right. know what I'm saying? Because it's lack of guidance. So, you know, um, we changing that narrative th these days. You know, Facts. guys like myself went through the struggle. So I want young men to hear my story and say, Dan, just take a piece. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Just take take what you need and and do something with it because you're gonna need it out there. Facts. I spent when I came home eight years ago. I had more time in prison than I did on the street. I had about 24 years in, and I was just about to turn 48. So you know, I had to look at that. And you talking about from an infant to when I first got in trouble and went to jail, right? The fundamental years to my adult years being behind the bars, mm. in and out. You know. Going to jail, doing a, a substantial amount of time, catching a break, coming home, getting to the bag the best way I know how, getting jammed up again, right? standing 10 toes down, because that's mm -hmm. a must, you know what I'm saying? And right. then going back in, because I did two fair bids, you know what I'm saying? And the second one is harder, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you know the realities of what's there, but it's like, damn, I did this to myself again. So what's the first time, what year the first time you went, to, you got locked up? Meaning state or, you know, fans, what was the first time? The first time I got locked up was in Valhalla for um, a robbery. Westchester. Yeah, Westchester County. You know, um, I did six months, came home. They gave me a youth okay. act, came home from that. And then probably six to eight months later, I caught um, a federal charge okay. and went in. I did eight years what? on that. Um, it was possession and firearms. Okay. But at the time, they gave me, um, they ran, at this time, the law didn't come out. They used to run it consecutive. Mm. If you got caught with drugs and a gun, they would say the gun was using and carrying a firearm doing drug trafficking crime. But mm -hmm. it was simple possession. Okay. So by you getting whatever time for your drugs, they gave you the statute that required them to run it consecutive. Mm. And in 96... A case came out from the Supreme Court um, by a person named last name Bailey and Robinson, which was the 924C Act. Yeah, that's the gun. Yeah, yeah. And I got back on that. I, my original time was 12 years, so I already did the time for the the drugs when the act was enacted, and they reversed the case. They released like 16,000 people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, we all had to file and go back. Yeah, I was course. already doing the gun time, but we knew that the laws was set up. Like that when we when they were sentencing us yeah. to all the federal drug um, statutes, it was it was a setup. So Facts. we fought and got things overturned. Okay, so then you came home. Yeah, I came home and um, quite naturally, you know, um, I made prison fun, which was the biz biggest mistake yeah, I like ever. You, what, what, yeah, I was gonna ask, but the, like the first day, first bid, how you took that? I mean, the first fans, bid, you know, how was it? Like an idiot. I did my first bit like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? All I wanted to do was get back out and do the same thing that got me in prison because yeah. that's all I was willing to apply myself to. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the guidance or the strength to really go in the direction that I needed. Don't get me wrong. People spoke to me, right. but they didn't reach me. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So the streets reached me, mm -hmm. and I'm back out now. And like I said, eight months later, the feds is on us. Boom. You're going what you down. did your time, what, what, doing your time though, like what, what you did, 
do your time. Nothing. Try to smuggle shit in jail and Be you know all the shit. Yeah, do, nothing. Nothing made jail fun. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Which was a mistake. And then when I went into the that was six months in Valhalla. Then when I got caught by the feds, it was the same thing. How I'm gonna get through this twelve years? This way, I'm a young man. Didn't do much with my life out there. Now the feds is just grabbing anybody. Yeah. And I was at the beginning of that state. I was 89. It was that transformation of the real situation with the feds and the cartels and the gangsters. Yeah, the big shit. And now we're coming in young men yeah. out the urban cities. And we're like, whoa. You know? So, you know, we being groomed by the the guys who came before, uh-huh. before us. Before us, yeah. Before us again, you know. But it's more of a criminal mindset. I, I, wasn't, I was programming, but not programming in the sense that I'm going to get out and really change. You was programming to get out of jail so you could get back to the bag and do what you want. Yes, doing. programming to get out of jail, programming to do a good big, get the visits, yeah, yeah. stay fly. You know, what we the same thing we same do in the shit. street. And, 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 and that's not what jail is for. I'm not saying go in there and suffer, but if you go in there and learn your lesson and you be true to yourself, you're going to come home and make a difference. Mm-hmm. So when I did that, eight years after they took the... Five years off, I, like I said, I already did some of the right. the um, gun time already. Yeah, yeah. So it was an immediate release. We had, I was just in the riot in the feds for the crack law. You know, yeah. we, we, we tore Allenwood, we tore Allenwood down. Um, what year was this? It, it was 95. Okay. You know, they didn't, it was a couple of days after the Million Man March. And, you know, they spoke on the disparities of the law, right. you know, and, um, they didn't do much about it then. You know, they eventually did it yeah. decades later, but we was fighting for that. Uh-huh. Like, yo, you're just giving us all this time for these drugs and it don't make just, sense. And it's just water added to coke. Right. So, I, I, you know, we do what we do as young men. Uh-huh. We didn't change the law. Okay, we tired of doing time. We blew the, the federal system up, the whole entire system. We just ignited. Boom, boom, boom. We shut it down. And it was like, all right, we got to pay attention. You know what I'm saying? And um, things started to change a little bit. But it, like I said, it didn't come to decades later. They changed the law. I get out. Mm. Quite naturally, I didn't do enough for myself in there to prepare for the streets. So you came home? What year? I came home in 97. Okay. And my brother was doing a little something with the music. I'm like, okay, cool. I want to get involved with that. But he was new. And, you know, um, man got to eat. Boys, you know, but we out here, you know, and it just wasn't adding up. So back in the streets, catch a bed in Virginia, do two years for drugs. You know, come home Lucky six you months got later. Two years in Virginia. Huh? Yeah, but you get twelve years. Yeah, you get ten suspended. You know, oh, you okay. get the twelve years. Now you got ten years over your head. Or you know, so now I get out two years later. What I'm gonna do? Go right back to the streets, which I did. Catch another bed. You know what I'm saying? Just kept stacking another fed bed. You mm. know, now they, I begged them for it, the 15 years, because now I'm a career offender. Mm. You see, my minimum they is 188 you, months. Yeah, you go to the guidelines, the minimum. And my charge only carries seven to eight years. Yeah. But my record took me to a whole nother category. The whole guideline and, and all shit. the way down. All the way down, yeah. So I'm like, damn. My minimum is 188 months? And I know I did this? And I now I'm facing life? If I go to trial, I'm not going to play with these people. I don't know, I got to go in there and do what I got to do, change. My, he was blown away, like, pause. You know, damn. Just give me that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not 189, not 190. Give me the 188. And um, when he gave it to me, I was happy. I said, it may be just enough time for me to get it together. Right. And it was. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Because when all you know is this, it takes a long time to get into another whole situation. Facts. And that that's what changed my life. So you went back and then you had to hold this. Yeah, because actually, you know, what happened was when they pulled me over, I gave my high speed chase. I wasn't even trying to go in. The second time? Yeah, the second time. I got okay. keys in the car, coat, heroin. I'm at the top of my game. Yeah, you was trying to go. And we go all go today. If I'm either getting to where we all going. Because I know what's waiting for me. I know the amount of time I'm looking at, I'm thinking it's even more than my cop out. I'm like, yo, you, you starting at 30. While they running the car and everything, I'm like, oh, man, they hit on this car. It's going to be 
crazy. What you gonna do? You know, like, man, we out of here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you really about that. Yeah. And when I saw myself crash into a tractor trailer, high speed chase. Could have killed yourself. Could have killed him. Word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck, I care about, you know, my life when I'm throwing away, but then you got to care about someone else. He's just trying. Who knows what his life is like? He Because you want to throw yours away because you can't, at the moment, uh-huh. have it your way. You want to create any kind of way. And when I when they caught me, high speed chase, crashed, lived through it, got out the car, ran through the woods, helicopters, dogs, finally. Freezing to death mm. in the woods. Sean John ripped up. I'm like, yo, dude. <laughs> Like, like, you like, find yourself like, some shit, like, huh? dude, you like, shit. come on. And now I'm freezing. They got me surrounded. Can't find me. I can't give up. <laughs> it was the craziest situation in my life because I'm freezing to death. And they're right there. They can't find me. I'm like, yo, please find me. Because I can't go in and say, yo, I got too cold. And yeah. I told them, like, I'm yeah. wet. Everything. I'm in the snow. They... I'm, it's crazy, you know. And when they finally caught me, I was like, "Thank you." Yeah, you was like, "Fuck it, it's over." You know? Yeah. You, so now you, I'm you in. Get it? It'll be an old new journey. And when I woke up the next day and realized where I was at in Baltimore, because I was on my way to D.C. and Virginia, those were my areas. I'm in Baltimore. I'm like, damn. I'm, I'm like, I woke up. I ain't gonna front. It was a badass yo. I'm like, damn dream. I'm like, <laughs> say you wanna eat? You wanna eat breakfast? I'm like, when he prefaced, I'm gonna talk to you. Then I'm like, I'm looking at her. She said, Do you wanna eat breakfast? I'm like, nigga, you back in jail? Bro, you really did that last night? You did all that shit. That bro, you brought that much action to the fuckers. You did a lot of shit that, that day before. So pistol, you know. All I'm trying to say, man, no one has to go through that much to learn. Fuck no. You know, and that's what I went through. I went and did my time. And guys that know me in the feds, they respect me and because they know going in the second time, I had to do much because I did enough on my first bed. Yeah. But the drama never stops. Of course. So, you know, I'm telling everybody, listen, I'm programming this one. Ain't no visits bringing in drugs. Ain't no leave me out of it. I need to get, I got 15 years. I got a shot again. Guys like me don't keep getting shot. Eventually, put the nail in the coffin. You know what I'm saying? So I did my 15 years programming. Had situations that I had to deal with, but, you know, that goes with prison. But I stayed focused on so programming. You went, in, you, went, you went in and got what? You got your GED? I went to college. <gasps> um, I got my GED on my first bed, okay. my first fair bed. As soon as I went in, I got my GED because I always loved school. I always like yeah. learning, you know? So now it's like, all right, go to college. I did yoga. I did anything that kept me off the yard getting in trouble yeah. and preparing to fight when I got back out here, you know, because I'm like, I told myself when I when I realized what I did and how how crazy that was, I said, bro, what's your problem? Why is it that you always come home and you end up back in jail? And I had to be honest. I said, um, gainful employment is what I told myself. I said, you like gainful employment. Mm. You never had a job. You never gave yourself a chance to have a job. How you know it's not going to work? You want to be this big guy, but you got to start somewhere. Yeah. So I program myself because I can't work for no one. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? That's not me. I like my own schedule. So, but I knew I had to do that coming home, boss. You know what I'm saying? When yeah, I got relief, get, get a job. Fuck yeah. You don't do nothing else. If you, after 15 years, I told myself, after 15 years, if you don't come home and get a job, you set yourself up to do whatever it is again. So when I came home, everybody in New York, I told I was in the halfway house in Virginia. And everybody in Virginia, I thought I was in the halfway house in New York. And I was in a total halfway house somewhere else, minding my business, finding my way in a town I've never been in. You know what I'm saying? My family moved out of town. I'm going to that halfway house, and I'm going to start from the bottom. You know what I'm saying? If it take, taking the bus, taking the train. Was it challenging? It was real challenging. <laughs> but I, I, I wanted that. Cause I wanted I wanted to ask you that question because it was challenging like a motherfucker to me too, man. Absolutely. Totally that was the most challenging shit coming home. I mean, I can relate because I coming home, going to the halfway house, I went to uh, Marcy. I'm from the Bronx. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm in Marcy Projects and shit right there. Cause, and they only took me there because they didn't want me in the Bronx because everybody know me in the Bronx so they felt like whatever, I might have had, I don't know, strong. I don't know what it was. It was like, you want to have hours? Go to Brooklyn. It's like, fuck, I go anywhere. But it was challenging me getting out and, and, and first time ever getting a job. You know what I'm saying? Never had a job. And, now, and, excuse me, you remind me, how long was that you did? I did 17 years. 17. So how long was your transition? If you don't mind, I ain't trying to reverse nah, it. No, it's just, it, I mean, I realized a whole bunch of shit, man. I was like, man, once that, I just just coming home and it just, because, you know, you always have this, you know, you, you just, you're afraid of what you're going to, how you're going to, because you say a lot of shit when you're in jail. All kind of positive shit, right? I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But in your heart, you know exactly what you're going to do and this shit don't work out. That's a fact. So, you know, so you can front on anybody, but you can't front on yourself. So in my mind, I'm like, shit, what the fuck I'm going to do, man? You know what I'm saying? Like, I never work for nobody. Here I am taking the fucking train. I ain't got no license. I ain't got sh I'm fucked up. And I, I never in my life took a tr take the train and, like, the bus and, like, nah, I forgot all about this shit. I'm like... I'm fine. I'm like, you and it was all of that, and it was cold, <laughs> and I'm like going to the train three couple blocks away. I'm like, oh shit, it's fucking cold, and I that was like the most coldest. You ever read that book, Coldest Winter Ever? Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> I would think about yes. just that title. You know what yes. I mean? The yes. coldest winter ever. The book. Yes. You know, and I, I was like, shit, this is like really it, the coldest. Mm -hmm. And um. Uh, and, you know, thank God I had some good brothers. You know, they pulled up, you know, um, and, and helped me out. Um, they, was, they pulled up. They, they went to the halfway house. And I know a bunch of people. They was like, yo, job, what? This, that. Yo, go to Queens. No one out of the city. Uh, we got Dino. He got the construction. I mean, he the, uh, the plumber and this, that. He got this company and this, that. I was like, oh, all right, cool. You know, where's, where, let's go. I called Dino. Dino, what's up? Yo, P, what, uh, come see me tomorrow. I had to take like two trains, one bus. I was, I could, I used to be in that shit like, all right, here I go on this train, bus, and I'm like, so it got a little better. You know, I was just afraid. I was, it was challenging to me because I was going through that transition of really trying to do the right thing, not just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because we could talk about it all fucking day, and then you come home and you go back to the same shit. It becomes easy, something pops up, or word. Yeah, oh, all right, let's do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I want to get involved with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, and it's easy, and it's, it's easy because it's there. So I was trying to, like, let Pete, you got to you gotta just stay focused, you know, because my I'm, I'm not a drug dealer. I'm not a, I never really, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm a stick-up cow. I like, I like to take it. I like to, so it's, to me, it's, like, really easy. You know what I'm saying? It's Honestly, so, so I'm like, oh, man, I'm going through this, but I'm, like, in my mind, like, Oh, I don't know. Shit going, so I don't know what's gonna happen, right? But I'm still doing it every day. Like I'm, in, I'm, I'm there at the at the job site, and, and my man Dino's like, "Well, Dino, repeat." It's a, it's a scaffold, you got to climb up. They was doing like the sprinklers. Yeah, I'm like, they like, "Yo, um, you got to get on the scaffold." I'm like, "I'm scared of heights, Dino. I can't get up there." He's like, "All right, so just just here here and give give the guys the when they come down, give them the boxes and shit and." You know, like he he knew that was like it was I was I was a Dean. I'm trying. He said, I, "I got you, Pete." And then uh, a couple of weeks, I got back. Got, I got up on the scaffold, went up there. You know, st st a couple of weeks after that, I started putting sprinklers up, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, and it felt good. I was like, cool. You know, I was getting the check. The check was on like two fifty after taxes. And all I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? You know that was man? my next question. How the check feel? Nah, check was. You know, I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm going to the uh, and then I'm in. So now I'm in Brooklyn, and I'm in half. I'm in the halfway. I don't know too much of Brooklyn, so I'm from the Bronx. I'm Bronx right. So, so I'm there, and I see you no know, Marcy Project. I pass through Marcy Projects every day. Oh, this was Jay Z from this. You know, and I just start exploring, going downtown, going to Fulton, going to Fulton downtown, and, and, and just using my time just to. Cause I can't go too far, cause I gotta be a certain time at the half hour. Mm -hmm. So I get out of work. He might let me out two hours early. I take that to go move around a little bit, this that. But I'm still waiting for my for my. I know I got some people's <laughs> outside. You know I got some good guys. That's, I know they're gonna come through, but when? Because shit, and I'm not reaching out or nothing. I'm like, let me just be patient. Mm -hmm. Let me not start, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. putting the pressure. Like, Yo, mm -hmm. I can't hold. Like, what's mm -hmm. up? So I'm like, let me just be cool. 
And then next thing you know, a couple couple weeks, uh, uh, I met a guy that was in jail with me, uh, a friend of mine, you know, good brother, and and he put me on with his cousins, and they was all like all Brooklyn from East New York, and they was getting super money and shit like that, and they pulled up and shit. It was like, yo, shut. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow, what time I have? What time you work? This, that, and I, uh, this, that. I, I gave him right. time, boom. Ah, right, we gonna come pick you up. They come pick me up. Benzes, this, that. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, uh oh. I'm like, I'm like, all right, so. And I know they're doing their thing, right? But I'm not asking any questions. You know, we come from the fan. You ain't asking. No, I just don't want to be caught up in nothing new either. That's right. So I'm like, all right. So, and them Joe came. Finally, you know, my, my people, Joe came through, sent. DJ Serge came over. Yo, here, Pitt gave me the bag. So I'm like, damn, that's Good. a lot of money. I'm Good. in the halfway house. You know, what the fuck? He's like, well, I mean, what you want me to do? Hold it for you to, to, to what you want to do? <laughs> I'm like, ah, right, let me get some, right? And hold that and shit like that. I, I'm in the halfway house. I'll be in, 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 in Brooklyn, they mind time what you bring in, right? Yeah, no, but I wasn't even mind time and shit. Yeah, you do that when you get a job. Okay. But this is, you coming through the halfway house like, and they were, so they was being, they was already like, damn, you got bad people coming through. People started, you know, knowing that I'm there. So them, all these Brooklyn guys came, and they they don't give two fucks. They like, nah. they've been in the street getting money. They, yeah. They're like, what? What's up? You know, throwing the money around, and I'm like, oh shit, you know, and and uh, and and thank God, you know, cause they they helped me out a lot, man. You know, like That's wonderful. Uh, uh, the brothers, I didn't know them from shit. And they, they took me out. They took me shopping. It was they took me to my job. Uh, I had to go get my license. It was like, come on, let's go. They took a day to that's, go get my license. I went and got my license. And then with the money that I got from Joe, I got myself a hoopty. You know what I'm saying? I, said, I ain't taking no fucking bus mm -mm. train. Mm -mm. I'm like, fuck. That when they got my license. As soon as I got that bitch, I was like, shit. And them uh, you know, it was it was a good feeling. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just stay right. I'm gonna stay cool. And it was complicated. I mean, because it took a long time for dog dog in the yard to be created for me to think this way, for me to be this way. You know, I, I came home and I still was being, you know, me, Pistol P. I'm around Joe. Joe's getting, you know, lawsuits. I'm punching up. I'm punching NFL players in the mouth. I'm beating up DJs. I'm tying up certain rappers and they mm -hmm. crying to me and all kind of weird mm -hmm. shit happened in the industry. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm on some, I'm on some kill all rat shit. That's and, right. And niggas is like, yo, this, you know. So it took, you know, it took a, it took, it took a little while. You know, it, it took a while. I even caught a, I caught a situation again. I caught a four tenth murders. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I, I was fighting it for four, for three years. You know, I went to trial, and my first day in trial, I beat it. Congrats. You know what I'm saying? I was, I couldn't believe it. I was sued yes. up. You know, only only those that would been in jail and they know the Absolutely. feeling, right? Know that feeling when you you outside. But I'm off, I'm outside because my, my my obviously Joe bailed me out. Mine on bail fifty thousand, but I got these guys point the finger on me. I'm it's, it's being Not real. Good. Not good. So I got you know I'm like oh my god. So I'm like fighting this shit. I had the, one of the best lawyers, um, Dawn Florio. You know shit. She came, boom. She saved my life. Shout out to Dawn Florio. I love you, man. Shit. And 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 we went. You know what I'm saying? We went all the way. I was like, fuck that, man. I got I can't cop it out to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm and we went all the way and I beat it. You know what I'm saying? Obviously somebody else stepped up. They say they did it and da 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 and shit was sideways. You know, once they got to create the doubt, you know, they can't do nothing with the case. And I went there, boom, I didn't even as soon as I went to court, it was like, yo, they're dismissing it. Good. And I was ever since then, I said, Oh, that's it. You know what I mean? No no more jail shit. Like, let me just you know, I gotta, I gotta fall back and just, you know, you know, and and and, and learn how to just be patient. And I've been patient, man. You know, a lot of people they look at me, and be like, "Pete, you know, they see me in the street. I get all the love in the world, man. Everywhere I go, I love it." A lot of people feel that I should be super rich, caked up like my friends and all that. I'm cool. I'm cool where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I'm comfortable where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? And I'm blessed. Sounds like it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm cool. I'm good. And I love what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? You gotta love what you do. That you know makes saying? you rich, and, and that's make me. It makes me feel so. I, I I feel good to have. You know, I never thought in my life. You know, I'd be doing this. You know, sitting down with a brother and breaking it down. We doing this for the youth. We doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You do. We doing it for they can stick. They, they can get a, somehow. We could grab somebody attention. One or two of them that can see my show and be like, "Damn, Pete. You know, wow, what you doing after all this shit? You know, I'm king of Rikers Island. They talk all these shits about me going crazy on the island. So it's like." 
you know, and now this is what You're I'm doing. You're doing something with it. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, and, and I want to bring my peoples because we never had a voice. You mm. know what I'm saying? All of us in prison, we never had a voice. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I created Dog in the Yard. You know what I'm saying? So we got to have a voice. So we could, your story is important. You know what I'm saying? Because it could change somebody's life. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I, I it, it was, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? I never thought in a in million years I have Deb Hill right here with me. You know what I'm saying? My sister right here. Shout that, out to you know what I'm saying? Super no love. Like, you know, you feel me? Oh yeah. Like I was I was trained to to not ever speak to Deb Hill. I mean, I never thought when I was bitten, we didn't do that. We didn't speak to no police CEO, none of that. I mean, let's be let's be realistic, right? We I used to be now we got our like, own CEO, on. I used to be like on that side. Hot. Like I'm not talking to no CEO. Like get the fuck out of here. Yep. Like it was on and popping all the time. Nigga, do you where you stay at? Brooklyn where? Like I'm from the Bronx. That's right. You know, and this is just it just showed how much we have grown. You know what I'm saying? And and I want to show, I want to share my my growth and share my growth with the, with with the world. I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's proud the only way we gonna get the attention of the young brothers that are out there lost. Not the only ones that's out there lost. It's a million of them in Rikers Island and in all kind of jails lost. But I could only relate to the ones that I could see because I've been going to Rikers Island for the few past. Weeks after 30 years, they let me go back on Rackers Island. I've been going in there to talk to the kids, and they need it. Wonderful. And I can see that I could be it. I'm the Jay-Z of this prison reform shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I'm coming in there mm. like, we're going to tighten this up, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to get this shit together because, I mean, I don't know what y'all doing. Y'all fighting about blocks. Them blocks are still there. You know what I'm saying? We ain't fighting about no money nothing like that, so what are we doing? And uh, and thank God, you know, they listen. They listen. They want the, they want the real shit. Not no Maple Leaf program shit, none of that. This is not no Maple Leaf shit. Nah. This is real shit. Nah. Like when I go in there, you know, I get a great conversation, great interview out of you, and I see what you're doing, you want that. Because that's just the way I am. Oh, I need you. I've got a, a date. Give me, I need your government. Make sure CK got it. You come into Rikers Island in a few weeks with me, y'all, so we could bring this knowledge to these Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. That's you old. Know? We old. But you know what I'm saying? So. It's good, man. I love to see brothers. You know that you know we it, we finally got it. Yes, you know what I mean we finally got it, and we alive to to, to for the, to be able to live up what we want. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of time we just we have we we always want what we want in our mind, but you know it's just it's, it's, it's the demon is always around. Facts. You know. Now nah, this is good. This podcast is great. It's needed, man. I, I'm proud of you. No, I appreciate you, know, you, man. I appreciate you. They need having to watch you, this and, and and thank you for having me. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Because you know, some some interviews I love. I can sit there and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Some interviews mm -hmm. is not all the same. No. Okay? Some interviews you gotta you gotta really push the brothers to be, you know what I mean? Sometimes they come in here, they I don't know what kind of what, what program they watch or what show they watch, but this is not the show that we're gonna come here and talk about jail's it. You know what I'm saying? Nah, not at all. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Not so at all. Don't make jail fun. Because sometimes, sometimes you know, fun. this is G shit. It's been times where we'll come, I have, I have a brother, and they'll come here and they be like, Yeah, some shut, man. Yeah, hold up. We are not doing that one, buddy. Like, we not sitting here. We not we not doing none of that. Like, we got to, we, this is not what, this. you must be talking about some other podcasts or something. Not this yeah, one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. gonna talk that shit Keep it here. clean, man, because, yeah, you know, clean. Yeah. The, the voice that, that you bring in is the voice of the people that been through it. Yes. You know, and a brother like myself, I'm not glorifying prison at all. Fuck no. You know, you you know, we get our stripes from prison and then it allows us to come out here and stand as honorable men. But it's our job to avoid them from going through that. You don't have to be honorable to by going to prison. So you, I went to I went to this uh this event with the mayor and, and the other day, about a week ago, and it's my first time ever I mean around all this shit. You know, the mayor, mad police, all kind of suits, this that. I'm sitting there in the audience, they wanted me to participate to come. I'ma come, you know? And 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 um and and it was great that I and I and I heard what the mayor was saying that he was like everybody asking for this money we need money here and we need this and we need that and he's like that's cool we can get the money but we gotta understand that this is our community that we need to 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 fix our community ourselves because we the one that lived there and you know it doesn't take just a couple of dollars you know it takes us as well as people that live there and and, and he was right you know what I'm saying it takes us to sh live by example you know what I'm saying we gotta. Pick up the garbage in the corner if it's all messed up. Absolutely. All that. If it's 
something going on on the or somebody's going through like let's try to fix the problem before they call the cop. What's up, Lisa? Why are you arguing with, with Robert? What's going on with you guys? It's, let's talk. Let's this. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Money wise, what's up? Cause I, you know, like let's try to work it out and try to you know help out the community. Cause something. Cause the problem is that we don't. Nobody has nobody to talk to. Everybody out here on some on some dope shit. You know what I'm saying? Or to listen to. Yeah, you know, and then you know a lot of people got mental health. Mental health is important. A lot of a lot of people just been fucked up, stressed out, you know, <coughs> and, and, and and they never had nobody to talk to. No, I deal no, with a lot of no, that. With no kids. therapy, no therapy. You know, we all like therapy. Like I'm not getting, I'm not sitting down with no cracker or no sitting down and you know, because that's our mentality. We ain't not sitting around and, and expressing my feelings to nobody. I don't know because I went through that. When I wanted to sit down to, you know, motherfucker made me realize, yo, Pete. You might need some therapy, bro. And I'm like, you really think so? Yes, I really think that you do. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go. You know what I'm saying? And I open my mind to it in my heart. And I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me go. And and it was the best thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I was able to to let go. You be able to survive and just just talk. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing, basically, what they do, the same thing we do. We can do it amongst each other. We can always help each other. Absolutely. All we gotta do is just. Cast the vibe. And, We're doing and, and, that. Yeah. This is helping each other. Yeah, of course. You know? That's what I'm saying. That's why I get... This so all that right there... Is, is, is definitely helping me. Yeah, is, so all that right there, all that therapy, I'm telling myself, I could do something. I could put all that together and do something and I'll do my own show, have my own people and, and we talk and face ourselves and see how we can help other people and... and, 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 and and our communities and all that. You understand? Using your experience to help you know, others. Yeah, so you know, um, I like what you do. What you been doing? Message you been home. Well, well, when I first when I got to the halfway house, I had signed up to um do construction and CDL. Okay. So I went through both trainings. And um the CDL job came through first. Okay. So that was my first job. You know, I got my first check driving, track the trailers. Okay. And then, you know, like I said, before me working for someone isn't my thing. So I'm like, okay, what you gonna do after these trucks? You know? So I started a trucking company. You, you know. Focus. Yeah. And then while while I was building the trucking company, I said, okay, if it's your own trucking company, you're still gonna be out on the road building your company. Yeah. I really didn't want to be out on the road. So I'm thinking ahead of time, I said, okay, start a brokerage. Get to the logistics parts because once you have a transportation company, you know, it's still levels. So, you know, I'm like, okay, you're still here. There's someone else that's getting a piece of this money. The broker who's dealing with the manufacturers or the distributors mm -hmm. of the product. I said, how can I get some of that money, be in a broker position, and now hire people coming home from work, I mean, coming home from prison, excuse me, and, and things of that nature, people who need a job, right? you know, and, 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 and pay them good. You know right. what I'm saying? Because now that I'm working for these trucking companies, they robbing us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We paying for low, we we working for low wages. So a brother of mine was supposed to start studying. He didn't. So I got with someone else. We studied, passed the test. I started a uh, logistics and trucking company. Mm -hmm. But my passion was always fashion. So I started a kid's clothing line called Jiggy Kids. Um I did a fashion show yesterday. It, it brings a lot of awareness with kids dealing with autism, sickle That's cell. Yeah, this is the dope version. This is just something. Yeah, yeah. My line is for kids, though. Um, and um, it highlights kids with autism. Oh. A lot of societal issues. Yeah. You know, um, the characters that I created is from the endangered species list. So I actually took real endangered animals and animated them to present to the kids and bring awareness to these causes. Sickle oh, cell, dope. kids with cancer, anything dealing with kids. Um, actually took an African wild dog, and I named him Agbo. Agbo means friend mm -hmm. in his native um, country. And I assigned Agbo to bring awareness to kids being now sacrificed, mm -hmm. sex trafficking, and things of that nature. We need to really start protecting our kids on right. all fronts. Right. So that's where I'm at. I'm mm -hmm. on that side with fashion, but bringing the awareness. And the line is fire. And I'm not wow. just saying it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really put my all into it. Thank you. So, you're on the lookout for that. Yeah. I mean, you can that's always come back. 
you know, whenever you want something to be promoted, anything you have going Appreciate on. Appreciate that. You go over, you, this is your platform. You, this is for us. Thank you. So anytime you want to come back, you do, just be like, yo, I'm going back to Dog in the Yard. Yeah. I, I yeah. need to promote this thing for yeah. th th that we're doing. Yeah, I'm in the yard scrapping, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, know, you are. Like you. Yeah. You know, we so working thank it, you for man. this. Now, I appreciate having you too, man. Likewise. So, so, so that's what you're doing. That's great, man. That's yeah, so, great, you know, man. you're going to see a lot of fashion shows. You know, we also have a streaming platform. You know, um, I'm a part owner of Fan Vision. Okay. You know, that's a part of Red Coral. We have our own streaming platform. Okay. So, you know, a few things that I'm involved in trying to push through, you know, because startups ain't easy. Yeah, I know. You know, you start a business, you think you, you're going to take off. Some get lucky. Some have to work hard, you know. Sometimes we just got, when you start something, you got to, whoever you meet, you got to follow suit. You got to, it's about tapping back in. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we meet people and all that, you get good good hookup, good connects, and we never tap in. We never follow suit. We follow up. The follow up is important. And helping each other. It's really, really important that we get back to appreciating and loving each other and really get rid of the, the self-hate or the hate we project yeah. on others. You know, we really got to take stock of that because- we're being conditioned to act this way. Mm. We have way better sense. Yep. We have way better, we have more morals, values, and principles. And them things really mean something. Mm -hmm. A friend means something. Absolutely. An enemy means something. Yeah. Let's get back to the real meaning of words. Facts. Stop playing with words because words have power. They start wars and end wars. That's Absolutely. how powerful words are. Yeah. So you just, I, that's my, my message now, like, like like what you doing, you know mm -hmm. you 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 a household name out here, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you doing some great. You're not taking your legacy and saying, yo man, you know this how you gotta continue to be. You saying, okay, look at me, I'm just like you, Facts. I'm no different. You're just younger than me. That's it. I just don't want you to make the next excuse me, twenty years of mistakes that I made that I had to go through at your age. Facts. That's all you want to tell them. That's it. And, and and even though you're gonna go out there and make those mistakes, at least have someone you can talk to. Facts. You know, and it ain't always your friend because he knows just as much as you. Mm -hmm. Get closer to the OGs. Yes, yeah, sir. The older ladies. Get mm -hmm. back to respecting them and honoring them. Facts. You see? That's a fact. Because they're gonna take you into the next phases of your life and you're gonna have something with you that's gonna protect you or save your life, keep you out of danger, or even make you rich. Mm hmm. Because you're sharpening yourself with people that really care, been through it, and have something to give. And we got a lot to give. And, and they don't win. know that. And want you to, you know, they want you to take it. They want right. you to win. Right. And we do. But they don't, a lot of the youth don't think that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They look at our jail stories and they oh, nobody want to hear that. You don't want to have a jail story. Facts. You don't want to have a you jail story. You don't have one. No, hell no. We had to keep our mouth, we had to keep our mouth shut. That's what I'm saying. You don't get my brother. You don't get my mother. Yeah. See, people are no longer accountable. Yeah. Okay, we don't want to project violence. Mm -hmm. But why are you out there doing stuff because you get a get out of jail free pass? Yeah. It's not cool. You're making life harder for yourself and others. For your family. You know, those that love you, those that's there for you. Don't do nothing stupid. But if you do it, stand up, be a man, be accountable. Absolutely. That's yours. Wear that. Be a woman. Wear that. Up top. Wear that. Wear that. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're in situations by guilty by association. Sometimes you got to wear that too because you know better. Once you get out of that situation, mm -hmm. and I pray you do, mm -hmm. you do better. Yep. That's a fact. You know, and, 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 and stay connected to us, man, because we're here for the youngins. There you, you know go. Salute. You already know. Your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. You already know. Appreciate having me, my brother. Thank you, my brother. You already Pleasure know. Pleasure being here. Dog in the yard. Salute. What up, what up, yo, 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 yo. welcome back to Dog of the Yard with your boy Pistol. First and foremost, I want to thank TK for coming through. Keep doing your thing with the Jiggy Kids closing line. You know what I'm saying? You out there working with the youth. We definitely going to be hollering back. You know, stay in contact and you're doing great things, man. You already know, salute, man. Your boy Pistol Pete, Dog of the Yard.